Hey, how's it going guys? Key back at it again with another video. Today I will be taking you through the steepest learning curve that the Kingdom Hearts series has ever thrown at fans of the original game. Now while I think that a lot of what I'm about to say can be applied to the original Game Boy game, we will be using Retain Memories which was the remake made in 2008 and then gloriously remastered for the PlayStation 4. But enough about the history of the game, you're really just here because you're wondering why. Why can't I just mash X like I did with the first one to beat the game? Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you all the tips and tricks I can muster to make sure you have the best time you possibly can with this game, because at its heart, Chain of Memories has one of the best stories of any standalone Kingdom Hearts game. Not that any game is standalone, but you get my point. So for all of you that are thinking about just watching the cutscenes, then put that aside. Watch this video, and I'm going to show you how you can be better at Chain of Memories. I know it seems like the lame thing to do if you just beat Kingdom Hearts 1 on proud mode or whatever, but there's no shame if you do your first playthrough of Rechain of Memories on beginner. Especially since it's your first time doing it, and it's a completely different experience from the last game. Now this might be the most obvious tip on the list, but honestly, it's important to pay attention to the tutorial and remember all you're being taught. Especially when Leon teaches you how to use slates and how to perform combos with them. All of that will be your number one way of doing effective attacks against boss fights and enemies down the road, so it's extremely important that you pay close attention. I apply this logic to every RPG I play. Grinding early will save you the hassle of losing to your first boss or two if you do it right from the get-go. While this is basically a card game simulator, it's still at its heart a full RPG experience, which means grinding for EXP is a must. In Traverse Town, as Sora or Hollow Bastion as Riku, since you won't have any real impressive cards at the beginning, it's best to spam Trinity Limits as often as possible. Sora's Trinity Limit with Donald and Goofy makes Goofy into a human battering ram, and Riku's Trinity Limit with Mickey will not only heal you, and it's the only way to heal during a fight, but also gives a quick burst of light magic, dispelling enemies off of you, and doing a little bit of damage in the process. I'm not going to be discussing Riku this much in the video, but if, if you would like a follow-up one for just him, then I will be more than happy to do it. Just comment below. One thing you will quickly come to realize is that finding the exit of any given floor in Castle Oblivion is nearly impossible without your trusty map. Done enough grinding to satisfy yourself? Then check your map and using those room cards, make your way towards the exit or the next key room. The map will save you the headache of getting lost in the labyrinth of your own making, and it's super easy to access too, with just a click of the center pad button on your PlayStation remote. What's that? You're playing on Xbox or Switch? How would I know what buttons to push? PlayStation is where the games originated, and so PlayStation is where I will stay for Kingdom Hearts for the rest of my life. But in all seriousness, use your map because there sure as hell ain't any NPCs that can give you directions when navigating Castle Oblivion. If The Legend of Zelda has taught gamers anything, it's that breaking objects equates to money, HP, and other useful items. Kingdom Hearts is no exception to this rule, and in Chain of Memories, it may end up being quite useful to you. In Sora's playthrough, you can smash barrels, boxes, some poor citizen of Agrabah's livelihood, you name it. From these, you can get HP and the elusive Moogle points, which can be used in Moogle Rooms to purchase card packs to make your decks even stronger. And remember kids, yellow number cards are the secret rares of this trading card game. These will take up far less space in your deck, and they just feel special in general. So go for them, as often as you can. Break everything. Slates are something you absolutely must master to be good at this game. Setting up card combinations in your deck ahead of time can be the difference between life and death. As a general rule of thumb, you should take advantage of there being three deck slots and make each one useful for different things. I personally use one for grinding enemies, another for boss fights, and the last one to test out new slates or just for fun in general. If this is your first playthrough, you really don't need to worry about this, but I just thought it'd be something to include in case you did feel like trying it. But going back to slates, each slate is made up of a combination of three cards. So when setting them up in your deck, you just check the order of the cards for whatever slate you wish to perform. Most slates have to be unlocked at certain levels, so in my opinion, always level up your slates before when given the option. I'll leave a link in the description to what slates unlock at each level, but if you want my opinion, the best slate you can get early in the game has to be Stun Impact unlocked at level 7. And for the very late game, Warp and Mega Flare are amazing as well. As long as you keep slates in mind, as well as having a few potions and cure cards on hand in the middle and end of your deck, you will be ready for literally anything. Oh, and also, for most boss fights, having a lot of fire cards and level 9 cards will greatly increase your chances of winning, because of course the higher number of the card, the more damage it will do, and also the less likely your cards will break mid-combo. 
Hey guys, it's Ed and Key here, and I realized after capturing a lot of footage and going through the previous tips that there's a lot more I could still tell y'all, so get ready for the bonus round of tips by Key. Let's go. Cards with the zero value are the most broken and also the most easily broken. Play them after your opponent plays their card to destroy their slates or stop their attacks entirely. Check the text for each room card as it will change depending on what card you use to open each door. Summon cards like Simba are also really really good for early grinding. I realize that now as I'm adding this bonus section, so forgive me on that. On occasion you will receive Heartless cards, which can give you a great advantage if you have them in your deck, so I always recommend putting at least one or two in. Going back to the boxes and barrels, or even your Keyblade, if you hit a Heartless with one of those before attacking it, it could give you an opening for an opening attack, such as stunning it, confusing it, putting it to sleep, all kinds of different side effects. It really just has to depend on what you do in the overworld. Types matter. Use your knowledge of Pokemon type weaknesses to your advantage. Fire beats ice, ice beats fire, and so on. At the end of the day, this game can be pretty hard to learn at first, but just trust me when I say it gets easier as time goes on. Just keep persevering and soon you'll go from zero to hero, and for those of you who are still not convinced it's worth the effort, as I said in the beginning of this video, the story in this one is one of the best in any Kingdom Hearts game with interesting characters and a mystery that will surely make you question what memories are true and which are not. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope these tips were useful to you. If you would like more like it, then comment below what other tutorial videos would you like me to cover next, because I have a lot of ideas. But if you have any in particular you'd like to see, please let me know in the comments below. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. That's really all I got. I've been Key, and I'll see y'all. Peace.